to another episode of Yeah, No, I Know. But before we get started, a little disclaimer. Nothing in this podcast is being claimed as fact. Most everything discussed here are our own individual, personal opinions, beliefs, and experiences. We encourage you to always do your own research and form your own opinions. Nothing one person says on this podcast goes for everyone here. Each individual speaking is speaking only for themselves and no one else on the podcast. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. This is Yeah, No, I Know. And we are, I don't even know what episode this is, but we are going Insert to, number here. <laughs> insert number here. Um, we're going to be talking about being boss babes and being the breadwinners of our relationships and possibly even between friendships and how that affects it and how we deal with it and how we don't deal with it well. Yeah, like how it, you know, um, making like success and how that affects like relationships you've had, like friendships yes. that you had for a really long time, um, childhood friends or new friends, like and just kind of how it affects relationships because we were all like super into this like feminine energy and like balancing that and letting our men like be masculine yeah. and taking kind of like the boss babe pants off when you come home at the end of the day, which is difficult. Yes. Um, it's very difficult. It's really hard mm-hmm. to turn on and off. So, it's so hard. Yeah. So when you brought this topic up, I thought it was great um, because I've recently read a lot of books about about that. But before we jump into it, I did want to mention that if you're watching on YouTube, if you prefer audio at some point um, or want to flip back and forth, we're also on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, which I'll link you guys to in the description box. And if you're listening on Spotify or another audio um, website, what is it? Apple Podcasts? We're on Mm -hmm. one other one. Mm -hmm. Also, I just don't remember what it was. Um, But you can watch the YouTube version if you want to get a load of this. We are, you know, we are vision, so <laughs> working on being visions. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, if you're just listening. We're sitting in um, Jenna's salon, and I'm getting um, her hair extension line put in my hair right now. Doing some hand tied. So if you guys are ever in San Diego and need some ball mass extensions and some awesome hand tieds or tape ins, these ladies have you covered. I'll leave their information in the description box. But um, thanks for that. Thanks yeah. for the shameless plug. Thank you for the hair. I'm so excited. Um, You're welcome. That's how this all started, too. Yeah. Actually, in this yeah. very room. Yeah. This one and that one. Mm-hmm. We were actually talking about how it's hard to take, like you said, those boss pants off, go home, and be a woman to your man, um, like, hypothetically speaking, right? So Yeah. And we all kind of struggled on that, and I think that's where we clicked. Yeah, and I would say that, like, we all can relate on some level, the three of us, to, like, the masculine, feminine energy and how it's kind of a yin and yang and how they play off of each other. And as women, like, femininity is, like, one of our most powerful things. And, like, Mm -hmm. sorry if I'm moving my head (laughs) while you're doing this. Um, Femininity is, like, such a powerful thing. If you can harness it, use it right, like, you can get a man to do literally anything you want. I mean, that's not the point of it. It's just to keep that to happy perk. balance. Yeah, but it's definitely a perk. Um, and obviously, if we struggle with that, there must be a lot of other people out there that do too. Right, right. And a lot of women that own businesses or entrepreneurs can be intimidating to not only, mm-hmm. you know, men that they might be dating or be in a relationship with. So, yeah, it's, like, important to, like, fall back into your femininity, in my opinion, for me. Um, you know, when I get home and like letting Nick be the masculine man and it is sometimes hard, especially when you have a hard day at work and you're just like all fired up, you know, or you're like dealing with employees or like whatever and you come home and you could just like let go and let them do it. But sometimes it's uh, easier said than done. Yeah. Well, cause in, in business we have to be very controlling. We have to control every aspect and be like on top on it. of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we go home and it's like, how do you let that go? Or with friendships, how do you like just let it go like how do you go out yeah. and have a good time and not plan every single second of it you know <laughs> like, right where are we gonna stay what time are we gonna go to dinner what are we gonna wear are we gonna be color coordinated? totally and then on the flip side say you didn't used to have money and you do now and you have friends that are maybe potentially like jealous of you or 
want to be in your life more now because they want to see what they can get out of you and that mm -hmm. kind of goes hand in hand with like controlling and playing things like like if you have people that just rely on you for certain things because they think that you have x y and z right and they're jealous of it or whatever so and they forget where you came from mm -hmm. right and they forget who you are mm -hmm. as a person like i was made fun of in high school and a lot of the people that weren't nice to me in high school come sniffing around trying to be my friend <laughs> like for free makeup and shit and mm -hmm. i'm just like you are a huge like you were like That's so disgusting yeah like you, that, they but. expect you to always like pick up the tab or pay the majority of things if you go out or vacation right. or whatever and it's like <sighs> okay but that happens with no. dating too like same Absolutely. thing like mm -hmm. i was you know finally became financially stable when i was in a marriage mm -hmm. Got out of that marriage, and I, it was a whole new world, like, dating, like, having my own money that I could kind of just do what I wanted, like, if I wanted that bag or if I wanted to go on that vacation. Like, I didn't have to check with anybody. I just, mm -hmm. like, went and did what I wanted, and it was so empowering. It was so, it was rad, you know, but, like, dating certain people, they would see my car mm -hmm. or my house or, like, just make assumptions mm -hmm. about what I have, and, like just imply that I should pay for things. I've even had people on YouTube mm -hmm. imply that, oh, well, you can afford more expensive than that because of what you do. I'm like, you have no idea what my finances are, right. what I make, what I choose to do with it. Like you, I could be in debt up to my freaking right. eyeballs mm -hmm. and Michael not Jackson. have a dime. <laughs> well, and just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean that you have a lot of money because a lot Absolutely. of people are irresponsible with it and then... They, I mean, that's my husband's in finance. He sees it all the time. Like people, just because you make more money, like you have to learn your cash flow. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people who have a lot of money don't keep a lot of that money. And so, you know, well, like they don't know. And not you're that also that's not like, entitled to it. Other right. People. And not right. that that's like our case. Like we're all smart with our money. However, yeah, like, but to still. build on that, also you can see a lot of money coming in, but to build a business, it costs a lot of money. Right. So yes, there's a ton of money coming in, but if you're an entrepreneur... The overhead is, like, crazy. It's insane. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, like, I don't know, d like, dating. when I, I was only single for seven months, but I definitely went out with a couple different guys that would, like, make comments about, like, oh, well, like, you could pay for that or mm -hmm. I'll let you do this. And I, it was, I was so turned off. <laughs> the fact that you would even... Even if you were joking, like, there's some truth to, like, all jokes, right? Yeah. So oh, they can the pay for it. the fact that you would it. say it. Yeah. I was like, I would never even say that as, like, yeah. you know, in a traditional role, the man pays for everything and, like, whatever. And I'm pretty traditional, but, like, in certain ways. But I would never make a joke like that. Mm -hmm. Like, no, just no. because I make what I make, that does not mean you're entitled to it. And sometimes, like you end up feeling that way with certain people that you maybe feel manipulate, guilty. manipulate, mm. why can't I say manipulate? Manipulate. 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 Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The guilt is, is a lot. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I struggle with guilt when I have people that I've hired or friends or whatever. Guilt, and I just, like, cause you make more money than that? Yeah. Like I feel mm. like I have to like give to them or I have to help them or I have mm. to try and get them to like get where I'm at. And then mm -hmm. it seems to always be this, you know, they, you give them, an inch and they want a mile or they're upset because you don't give a mile or you get taken advantage of unfortunately mm -hmm. it's like it's like when you see panhandlers and is that and then they go get in a nice car yeah like and they kind of ruin it for everybody because it's like okay well now I think that and now that's something that pops in my head it's like the same thing I feel like because I we I both just, had experiences where we've helped yeah. people mm -hmm. and they've totally stabbed us in the back. What were you gonna say, Brooklyn? I was gonna, I just don't like panhandlers. Period. I'm sorry, <laughs> people can hate me for it. It's like especially if you're like I I saw someone the other day. I'm like, you are young and healthy. Go work yeah. at McDonald's. Yeah. Like there's just no excuse. I don't know. Maybe that's like the entrepreneur in me, but I'm just like that's the thing. Is like my mom always taught me like you work, uh -huh. you make your own money, you buy your car, you have your house, you. Do it so that you never need a man. So that when you're with one, it's because you want, want to be to with be. them, yeah. not because you need to. And that's like just, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's not even like my mom was like crazy successful and like, I'm not even as successful as you ladies yet, but like, it's like, I've always been independent. I've always like done my own thing, had my own money so mm -hmm. that like, I don't know. Like, it was that that's share good. Thing, I mean, the share thing that I sent you guys. 
The share thing? The yeah, thing? where she said um, her mom would always say, you need to marry a rich man, and she oh, said, yeah. I am a rich man. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Well, yes. Share, C-H-E-R. Yes, yes. Now, now yes. I get it. Okay, that I was share. like, what did you share with oh, the share thing? Because my mom would always be like, oh, you need to marry a rich guy. Like, I My mom would always say that to me, too. Yeah, I'm like, screw that. I'm going to make, I'm, I'm going to make money. Yeah, so, oh, that's so I mean, funny. luckily, I didn't have to struggle with that, this type of thing too much with my husband now yeah because he has a very good job I do make a, a little more than him but we're both very entrepreneurial so he had businesses before I had businesses before and now we're collaborating on a new business That's but cool. it That's is rad. hard and I can see where it's hard for me personally when I get home I'm like you know like I I just want my way I want it how I want it when and then I they want feel it. like an employee Yes. I struggle with that with hard. Nick. It's hard. Yeah. It's really hard. And He's like, I'm, you're talking to me like I'm one of your employees. Yes. I'm like, first of all, I don't even, I, I talk to my employees very nicely. Very nicely. I don't yes. have any anymore, <laughs> but um, I was like, but I get where, like, your drift. Yes. I get what you're saying, and I'm like, I'm trying to, like, be the boss. Yes. And I don't want to be. Right. So, Well, and I how just, does it, how does it work too, Jenna? Like, because you and Ken are business partners yeah. now essentially and it's I'm hard. stepping into that role with my husband too. Yes. And so it's like being in business with your husband and ex husband. Still Try that one. Right? <laughs> ex husband, oh my gosh. Well and still it's, maintaining your femininity and communication and keeping so like hard. You, you know. know how it was when you first started dating and you were learning each other? Yeah. You have to relearn each other yeah, in a in a in a business mm, atmosphere. Yeah. And respect that is, is like the number oh one gosh. thing for that. Ken and I have been working well been business partners for I think it's about two to three years now okay. and we've gone through the COVID thing we've gone through some other things with like partners and it's been a real juggling act and I think we're finally at a really great place where like we worked we figured out what way to communicate with each other trust me we still have our issues but we figured it out and that's yeah. good but it definitely I still come home and I don't know how to switch it off sometimes though mm -hmm. and you have to like just be really aware and check yourself. It's yes. just so hard. It's so hard to switch back and forth between the two personas yes. in, in a sense. Mm -hmm. And I would say having a business with my ex-husband is one of the things that kind of ruined our relationship. Like wow. we weren't meant to be together. Mm -hmm. So it did what it did. But like I was young and I didn't know how to respect a man yes. the way that they mm. need to be. Yes. And it's so important. Like men need respect the way we need love. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's like that book. Yeah, love exactly. Yeah. Love and Respect is an amazing book. And then also yeah. Simply Feminine. The author is actually from San Diego. Oh, hey. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but learning that book, I like, I read it and I'm like, I have to reread it again because sometimes like you just have to like stop bossing your boyfriend or husband around like, oh, pick up your clothes. Like mm -hmm. I literally read that book. And I was annoyed that Nick's clothes were sitting around. They're usually not. He's usually very clean. But I was like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to listen to this book. And I'm just going to, like, just build him up and, like, do what I'm doing. And then literally within 10 minutes, those clothes were gone. I was That's like... That's so hard, though, isn't it? To be like, oh, don't you almost feel like you're being patronizing to them? Like... Oh, da 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 da. You like Are you I'm messy. Anything? Like I'm not like Ken's really really great about that stuff. I'm messy, but what I do find is I'm like I've worked a 14 hour day. I come home, I'm exhausted. Like, uh, like leave me alone. <laughs> like don't uh, like don't ask me why the dishes aren't done. Don't ask me why the laundry's done. And they don't want to hear that either. Yeah, I'm so. like I've been at work for 14 hours, six days a week. Like. <laughs> don't, don't don't you know what I mean yeah. so yeah that, that's hard that's, too yeah that's another thing is like juggling like household stuff oh my gosh you know? a mother a wife a business owner yeah it's several like, businesses it's exhausting because well, yeah. you like, try to do each 110 yeah, yeah everything and it's like it, it, on one hand like because we all want like we all believe in femininity and right. you know embracing that and it's like yeah. part of that is like taking care of your home right. and feeding your man and your kids and how do you do all of that and mm -hmm. hold all that while you're in business and sure you can pay someone to do those things but then you almost like feel like less Guilty. of a woman yeah. yeah because you're not doing yeah. it and here's the thing though <laughs> you can't pay somebody to go to your kids soccer games you know what I mean no. like, yeah. you can't like those are the things like I'm looking back now and I'm like shit like I wish I would have done that more I wish I wouldn't have but then at the same time, I've got my son who went to college, right? And he didn't get accepted the first time and tried again, built a business during COVID, did all this stuff. And I was like, I'm so proud of you. Like, I'm so, like, that's so crazy. And he's like, well, I learned from you. Oh, oh. 
Are you awesome. kidding me? I learned from my dad too. He owns like, his own business. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, uh, I don't I know. I wanted to say something back about Brooklyn's yeah. comment though about housework. That is actually an opportunity to like rest into your femininity and lay into it, to sit down with your husband and just be like vulnerable and be like, mm-hmm. look, I am trying to do X, Y, and Z for you. Mm-hmm. And because I want to take care of our household, mm-hmm. but I'm really overworked and I need your help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Men need to know that we need them. Yeah. We're living in yeah. a world yeah. where women, and you know, if this is your thing, um, that's totally fine. Like, it's just my feminine masculinity belief. Like, I, like we're living in a world where, like, men are afraid to ask a woman if they can help with their bag because women will get offended or something. Oh, Some please, women. help me with my bag. And well, one of the best things of being it. pregnant. Well, so, okay, well, here's a really great example. So me and Ken first started dating, right? He That's would it. always open yeah. the door for me. Mm-hmm. And I always would be like, oh, you don't have to do that. No, no don't let do that. Him. No. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now to this day, he's Thank like. Thank you so much. He, and I should have done <laughs> Thank that. Thank you. I totally should have done that. I should have been like, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. But like, Mm -hmm. he's taught me so much, like so much, but now he doesn't do it. And he says, it's because you were always like, no, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. But I thought I was being like polite and being like, oh no. (laughs) Right. Because you're taught that these days Right. and men need to be needed. Mm -hmm. They need their spot in the world where we need them and where Mm -hmm. they're feminine goddesses. And like, unfortunately they're afraid now like Nick will even say like I'm afraid to like ask like at the airport if like I can help with someone's bag because I don't want them to get offended yeah and he's like but my my goal is to like help and like men love to be needed and to do something and figure something out and Mm -hmm. fix something for us and take care of us yeah like back in the day like there's an example in this book that I'm reading gosh what the this book is uh it was either the one that you told me about captivating captivating or it was um, how to something like how to make your relationship better without talking about it, hmm. which was interesting. It was just like your actions, um, but it was talking about how men back in the day like they didn't need anyone to like survive. They just needed us to childbirth and all okay. that stuff. But mm. us, we always had to be with other women, and that's why we congregate as like little yeah, girl ships yeah. because. Yeah we need that protection. Like yep. we on our own are very vulnerable to mm-hmm. like being li- ripped apart by like right. predators or whatever. So men are protectors and like that is just innately in, mm-hmm. you know, men, um, heterosexual men, you know? Yeah. And so that's like, it's, it's a huge thing. So like, I think trying to balance that is like, you've got to read those books and you really have to like talk to other women who are great at respecting their man and don't surround yourself with people who do not speak well of or I mean everyone has their little moments where they're like oh my gosh like so and so yeah but like for the most part like people should build up their significant others and if you're hanging out with a bunch of women who don't do that like Mm. you gotta remove yourself Mm -hmm. yeah well hang out with women who hold you accountable yeah who aren't just gonna like tell you what you want to hear and oh he sucks and he should do this and right like hang out with women who are gonna be like actually you screwed up yeah. <laughs> you probably should have done this. You could have yeah, handled right? this better. Yeah. Go apologize. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's a big one. Well, I was going to say, um, cause we were talking about books, the book that I love, it's called captivating. Um, and it talks about how true femininity is what, um, brings out true masculinity. And <laughs> I remember reading that and like the way that we embrace our femininity, like you said, is through being vulnerable. And I, I don't know. I feel like in society nowadays, like, there's this huge, you know, feminist movement and the future's female, and, like, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the future has to be male and female, let's be honest. Like, there is no future with one or the other, one without the other. But it's, like, we can have this powerful movement for women while embracing our femininity. Like, we don't have to try and be masculine like them. We can let guys be masculine and women be feminine. Yeah. And that's what, like, it's that, like you said, it's that yin and yang. It's this perfect balance. And I feel like so many times, especially women in business, we're trying to step into these CEO positions and we're trying to do these things like a man would do it. We're not meant to do yeah. it like a man. Do it like a woman would do it. That's what we're missing, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> that's what I, That's why I think it's funny that f- the feminist movement, it's almost like the opposite of what it's like right. kind of meant to do mm-hmm. and like embody. So, I mean, I need my man. Like, yeah. I need him to be a man. That's, you know, that's how I thrive. And I need him to really be a man. Like, we go to couples counseling and my counselor's like, 
don't pussyfoot around it. Like, you got to tell her. Like, she needs it straight up. Like, just even if it sounds mean, like, don't sugarcoat it. Like, just give it to her how she, oh, you know. Ken doesn't have a problem with that at all. <laughs> <laughs> we call that brutally honest. But, uh, again, I mean, I say he's he's done a lot of raising of me. Yeah. We'll put it that way. <laughs> well, you know, I think all my boyfriends have in one way or another. <laughs> yes. But, um, yeah, I mean, we kind of veered over into feminism as opposed to, like, breadwinning and stuff, but they go, like, so hand-in-hand, hand, I yeah, feel like. Yeah, it does. Well, do you find that people, like, look at you negatively because you're so driven or because you're ambitious? Like, they think that you mm. aren't a good friend or a good um, empathizer or, like, do you have any problems with that? I do don't... Do you have a hard time keeping friendships? I... Yes, if I don't have... So, there... I have a few different types of friends in my life. I have friends that respect what I do, and I respect what they do, because we're both very hard workers, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you guys, mm -hmm. and we can relate. Like, I have a friend, um, like you guys as well, that I talk to a lot about business stuff. Like, she'll talk to me about different business things, because we can relate on that, and we've both built businesses, and we can have a good time, and mm -hmm. we are always talking about trying to balance our masculine and feminine mm -hmm. energy, um, so it's not too overpowering and stuff, so that's great, but then I also have friends from, like, my childhood mm -hmm. where we could just pick up right where we left off. Um, I only had one friend that, like, almost, like, attacked me and made fun of me for what I do on YouTube and stuff. Like, she was my best friend since I was in sixth grade. And, um, she like went off the deep end. There's a gnat. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I gotta kill it. <laughs> um, and We're she, site. <laughs> yeah, we are really, <laughs> um, and she kind of went off the deep end and just like made fun of me and stuff. So yeah, I feel like. Like to your face or behind your back? To my face. Mm. Yes. Mm. Said, oh, you in this little whatever outfit you do in this online. And it was just obvious that she was just very insecure and jealous. Wow. And I felt bad for her. Um, but I. I haven't really, gosh, I've been so busy. I don't really even make new friends right now. Yeah, I, feel like it's I don't hard even know to how make. you would. I mean, yeah. thank God for this. So I guess the friends that mm -hmm. I have, like, can respect my schedule and understand that, like, I'll get back to them when I can. Yeah. And, you know, I make an effort and uh, to, to do that. And now that I've, you know, sold my interest in Arctic Fox, I do have a bit more time mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, which is great. But what about you ladies? Like, has it affected friendships, like your success? Um, and, like, how? I think so. <laughs> Jen was like, mmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think that my drive can get in the way of my... I think my drive is my priority right now. My kids and my business, right? So mm -hmm. I am reaching 40 very, very quickly. So I have a lot of drive and that's where I choose to put my free time, right? So like I don't really care to go out and like drink and go out and whatever. I mm -hmm. want to work on business and if it's not business related, I tend to not make that a priority. Mm -hmm. And I have friends that totally respect that and are like, I get it and we can pick up right where we left off. And then I have friends that um, don't get it and think that I'm money hungry or um, just a bitch probably. are they just jealous you think or what's the what's their driving emotion they're jealous that it could you... be or it could be just different priorities in life you know like some people look at that and they think that it's it's a negative thing where I don't think it's a negative thing it's just mm -hmm. how I choose to spend my time you know and mm -hmm. um that's just a priority to me but yeah. um I just don't think anybody should be judging anybody on how they choose to, to spend their life. You know, like we only, we have one life on this earth and how we choose to spend it is up to us and we shouldn't be judging each other. And if we decide that we want to, you know, grow a business and make our mark in the world in that way, then we should be free to do that and not judged and looked down on. Mm -hmm. And if somebody else wants to spend that, you know, hanging out with friends and, and, you know, going out to dinner and, you know, whatever, then they should be able to do that and not be judged and, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah, I think it has affected some of my friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't it so funny how, like, you spend, like, you know, twenty fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a wedding and people are, like, congratulating you. You go to college and you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. People congratulate you. You buy a new car, get a home, go in debt. Start a business? Oh, gosh. You're an idiot. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, you're an idiot. What are you doing? I mean, and then you also start to see, like, who your real friends oh, God, are yeah. because they're like, oh, we don't mix, you know, business with friendship. 
Why? You're going to pay someone to like yeah. go do your hair or sit down <laughs> with you for their finances or whatever. Why would you not pay your friend for that? Why would you not support their business? Mm-hmm. Like people are so weird about that. And I just, I really appreciate people that are like, I want to support you. I yeah. want to support your business and what you're doing. And mm-hmm. I trust you. And you know, it's just, it's so funny. And it's like, you know, you are who you hang out with. And like you were saying, like, yeah. it's all about like your associations. And nowadays it's like, I, I have some friends that I've, I've kind of had to put on the back burner. Like yeah. I love you and we have fun together, but like, if you're not moving my life forward or adding value, like if we're just talking about the past, you're not doing anything for my future. Absolutely. I'm not living there. I'm living in the future. Yep. So like, yeah. where are we going? And that's like, I think a huge thing that like brought us all together. We're right. all like, okay, we're, you know, I hate the term boss babes. Like, we need to come up with <laughs> yeah. a different one. Like, I know. Yeah, we need a different Entrepreneur. Term. Yeah, entrepreneur, you know. Yeah. But yeah, and it's like, you know, what are we talking about that's like, what's next for yeah. us? What's going to elevate us to the next level? Our businesses, mm-hmm. our family, our relationships, whatever it is. And it's like. Well, and I feel like that's gotten me into trouble too with my friends is I will try. I'll be like, because I don't want to go wherever I'm heading by myself. It's no fun if you yeah. make it on your own. Like, who am I going to go on vacations with? Who am I going to go on trips with? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So I've tried to, like, push and, like, give all of my friends, like, um, you know, just the opportunity to mm. come with me. And yeah. somehow it always gets twisted. And I end up the bad guy. Like, mm. is that just me? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe their their level of ambition doesn't match yours. Maybe. And then there's some sort of a jealousy and they're feeling, you know, s- certain type of way. There's only certain people you can go into business with. Like, it's yeah. it's really hard who you choose to, to do that with. And like I was saying, like, some friends, like, can respect that and, like, add value to that and, like, talk to you and encourage you. And then there's some people that are just going to, like shit on all your ideas because mm-hmm. they're so insecure about themselves and what they're doing and it makes them look at themselves and unfortunately as humans we just compare each other right. like I compare myself to this person and this mm-hmm. person compares herself to me and like you're this and you're that and I'm not and it's like let's focus on ourselves it's so much easier said than done though Ugh. you know yeah yeah well, well actually I feel like I I feel like I focus on myself <laughs> maybe too much <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, good. I mean, Because I'm always shocked every time something's wrong. I'm like, wait, what? Where did that come from? Wait, why are you? Why are you upset? Why? Like, I'm like what happened? Yeah. Oh, you're mad. I've had that okay. happen. Yeah. Like, oh, we're not friends anymore. What did I do? I right. don't even know what I did. Okay. Exactly. See, and I think that's part of the business part is I'm so focused on this that I don't even realize. Mm. Well, because you're used to someone coming to your face and telling you what the fuck you did. Because you would do that. I absolutely <laughs> would do that. I'd be like. I mean, especially now, I feel like over the past couple of years, I got, I got really sick. Okay. So burnout is real. Like oh, yeah. super real. Mm-hmm. I was, I was really, really working a ton, but without this light at the end of the tunnel, I was just repetitively, uh, cyclically, like making money, spending money, making money, spending money, making money, spending money, right? Like I had no end goal. And now mm-hmm. with this business that me and my husband are doing, we have this light at the end of the tunnel. We have yeah. this retirement plan. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. it's still risky, but like it's still a an end game. So now I'm making money to put towards a future and hopefully like a this goal. successful business, right? Um, but when I wasn't doing that, I suffered the worst burnout. I got extremely, extremely sick. And this is really good for people that are ambitious mm-hmm. to hear too because everyone mm-hmm. goes through it. You hear about it all the time on, on the internet. And I'm reading a book about it, but, well, I was. Mm-hmm. I didn't like the book, so I didn't mm-hmm. continue it. But yeah, <laughs> think, um, there's yeah. some books on burnout. That hopefully there's some good ones out there. If you guys know of any, let us know. Yeah. Oh, your Jackie friend, um, Millie. Yeah. She just posted something about it. She oh, said something she? like, this is the face of something. And then like you flip through and I think there's like, oh, yeah. it's real. So she I got super, issues. super sick, like legit thought I was going to die, like crumbled to the floor, was like, I'm not going to see my kids get married, graduate college, you know, like this is it. And it definitely like changed a lot. And even though I'm still driven, I have a new goal. Mm-hmm. I have a new purpose mm-hmm. and that changes everything. It changes your outlook on everything. It changes your perspective. Perspective is everything. Yeah. So every time something hasn't yeah. happened the way I wanted to with business or whatever, it's like, I know now there's a reason mm-hmm. and I need you. It's either a lesson or, um, a blessing. Yeah. It, 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 it's one. So it's either a blessing or I learned something from it. So yeah, that's a big thing. But definitely if you get to that point, you need to take a break because mm-hmm. it ruined, it ruined a lot, it ruined my health. 
it ruined friendships. It ruined it. It, it was yeah. <laughs> There's part of that in the book. Uh, is it the Simply Feminine or the Love and Respect? I'll put it, I'll put all these in the description box, but there's one that specifically talks about writing a list of things that are your happy place. That's it's the getting... one, what's the one you had me read? It's was not it... Simply Feminine. What was it called? Was it Love and Respect? Nope. That's the other one. Gosh, what is it? I'm going to, I'll put it in the description box. Um, gonna, yeah. Yeah, if you can find it. I'm going to find I, it on it's, Amazon. I'm blanking on it, but in that specific book, it talks about yeah. making a list of things that are like, make you happy because burnout is so real. And when you're burned out and you go home to your significant other with that boss babe mode and that burnout, oh, you, bad. you, you're, you're headed for some trouble. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and I have not mastered this myself yet either, but I just go and go and go like I'm in a hamster wheel yeah. and I don't let myself get out of the hamster wheel yeah. until, and I'm, I'm a weirdo. Like I'm up at night thinking about the different things. I'll wake up at 5 a.m. and be like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do that one thing. I forgot to do this. I forgot to do that. And like, you have to like harness that because yeah. it just will get you into trouble. And then you take it out on other people around you that you mm -hmm. don't even realize. And it's like, they don't deserve that. And you definitely no. don't deserve that. Well, I think there's like a chemical, like re chemical like, reason for it too. Right. So like Brooklyn was talking about mm -hmm. some episode about the sympathetic and para parasympathetic. Sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is that when we're stressed, I can't find we're it. constantly we're like, <laughs> you know, on guard and we're constantly like, Oh, all the time. So if your body's constantly like that, it's going to break it's down. It's a state eventually. of panic. Like really? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right. just, well, and it's like, you know, there's, the um, analogy about like having your cup filled and you know whatever it's like you can't overflow and give to other people into their cups until your cup is full first mm -hmm. so you have to start each day like whatever that is that makes mm -hmm. you happy you know finding that time to pray meditate like do yoga whatever exercise. run yeah exercise, exercise Even just is walking. so important just you know? walking 30 minutes yeah. a day yeah, well, and it's and been talking about what we're grateful for. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it's it's been a new um, challenge and journey for me in motherhood because mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, moms out there, it's like, you get it. It's like you wake up and the child's screaming, you have to feed them, you know, they don't want to be put down. I mean, and you're trying to like, okay, it's two o'clock and you're still in your robe and you haven't brushed your teeth and you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to work out now. I'm not motivated. Like I don't have time to do stuff that makes me happy. And it's been, it's like, I know that I'm supposed to do those things, right. but it's been a whole new challenge, like being a mom. And now I'm going to be coming back to work soon. I mean, how do I juggle all of that? Like it's a real transition. I mean, we were trying to sit and do this podcast and my child was here and like, he was not letting me put him down and he was fussing and you know, it's like, just wanted some titties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy always it's jokes. True. He's like, that's all I need to do to get a boob in my mouth is just like <laughs> cry now. <laughs> um, uh, not you so know. easy for him maybe. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's like, you know, the moms out there, maybe you guys can give me some tips and help because it's, yeah. it's hard. Like, it the is. thought of it, it makes me want to cry because it's like, I'm trying to be a good mom. I'm trying to be a good wife. I'm trying to be a good entrepreneur. And it's it's freaking hard. It's yeah, it's hard. really hard. Sorry. <laughs> it's hard. And, you know, the thought of Jenna and I have been talking, like, how am I going to come back to work? What am I going to do with my child? He, he just wants me and that's my yeah. priority now. But at the same time, I have to make a living for him. I have to provide have for him. Yeah, you... I have a business. I'm working with my husband and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, then I am also like, oh yeah, let me like give my husband attention too. I can't forget about him. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. like a uh, friend was just talking about that the other day. She was like, my child is so difficult that my husband gets home from work and I've been dealing with her all day and then he wants attention and he's jealous of, yeah. and she's like, I have nothing left. She's yep. like, I don't even want to have sex with him. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I just saw a post on that where they're like, you, your child is touching you all the time. Yes. And that's what she said. Of yep. the night, you like the last touched. thing you want is to be touched, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I guess it depends on your love language. I'm like, no, touch me, cuddle me, hold me. Like, you know? That's, yeah, I love to be touched too. But yeah, yes. in, in full transparency, I had a full on like meltdown the other day. And Andy was like, Brooklyn, stop what you're doing. Here's your Bible. Like, get out of the house yeah. and do not come back for an hour. Like, me and the kid will be fine. He's like, you need to go out and, like, you need to call your mom. You need to read your Bible. Whatever you need to do, just do not come back for an hour. Because it's like, 
it, it's it's a lot. You can't do everything <laughs> else clearly with a clear head if you don't nurture mm-hmm. your own needs. Yeah, like, yeah. I put my own needs on the back burner so often sometimes, like whether it's exercise, eating uh, healthy, mm. or doing something that I want to do, like my nails are all jacked up, mm-hmm. or doing something that I like want to do. Um, Isn't and that like, every woman? Yeah, and then you pay <laughs> for it. And it's like you could just, if you just did a little bit along the way, you could just do everything else so much better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks for picking all the hairs off my... <laughs> <laughs> Jensen over here picking all the hairs off me all day. Thank it's you. The mom. It's the mom and me. <laughs> My hair looks so awesome, by the way. Yeah, thank yes. you so much. If you guys are listening and not watching. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go go check out the YouTube. Yeah, exactly. They're blonde locks. For sure. Um, well, one thing I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested is... Maybe this is... Well, no, this isn't too deep because we all talk about this. But, like, sexually, <laughs> right? Is it hard to let go in that way? Intimately, sexually, like... No, because you know I'm I mean? so fucking burnt out from work. I just lay there. I'm like, no, that's what I'm saying. Do you like him to take control? <laughs> oh, you know what I mean. Depends okay. on the day for me. Interesting. Um, I mean, take. I mean, yeah. I just, I've like... heard women that are like CEOs, and it was in one of these. Oh, like they're more dominant in the bedroom. No, they're not. Oh, they huh. like to relinquish control in the bedroom, and I thought that was oh. interesting because they're so controlling. Of it. That's the one place where they like want to be controlled yeah I usually am like that but I'll get I'll get a hair up my ass and be completely the opposite right it really just depends okay interesting but just about you? um I don't like to be con- in control <laughs> <laughs> no I don't think I do either I mean I don't know if there's really one person controlling more than the other when it comes to yeah I guess that makes At least sense. for us, I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe we're not into weird enough stuff yet. No, <laughs> they're not. <laughs> Just kidding. I've uh, been talking to her about some pretty weird things, I guess. So. <laughs> well, I guess me, I want to be pursued. We're oh, happy. Oh, sure. you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't want to have to make the effort. I don't want to have to be like, hey... I mean, Men need that too, though. Sometimes I know, and it's so annoying. It's just like one of those. <laughs> oh, sometimes like, I love that. I'm pull like, their pants down crap. while they're cooking dinner and give them a blowjob. <laughs> like, just honestly, you you. Oh my gosh! One time, I have to tell oh this blowjob story. <laughs> I think everyone that Nick knows knows this story because oh, he no. was so excited about it. Oh no! We, we were boss babes to BJ's. <laughs> <laughs> well, boss babes know how to give good blowjobs. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we're driving. This is an explicit show. Children should not be listening. Um, this. If you are my kid's friends, turn it off now. <laughs> right now. Um, I'm not giving any details. I'm not going to write a how-to but or tell a how-to. But we were driving in Nick's truck um, to Mexico, and we were kind of in the boonies in the middle uh-huh. of nowhere. And so we would only pass, like, a semi. It was, like, a two-lane or something like that. And so, like, I started going down on him and then right when he finishes we literally drive into a town and there's just people all over mm. and I was like I lean up I wipe my lips and I'm like oh we're <laughs> literally civilization in the middle of a town <laughs> and he was just like I, he talks about that to this day so like I need to do Can another you one of those warnings? no he <laughs> just was like I'm gonna I, I honestly he was probably just seeing like Happy rainbow colors, colors yeah. and like kaleidoscope Green like fields I, and... I have no idea and I even I feel like I must have asked him like were you gonna tell me that like we were approaching like a town with like cars and people and like you know but yeah so the timing was just so perfect so I feel like those moments are also like super important to give your man like yeah it's exciting like it's unexpected um and everyone needs that yeah Good to know. Get on it, ladies. <laughs> I'm so quiet. Am I only fucking freaking here? <laughs> They're uh, like, um. <laughs> well, okay, things get a little different. You guys will realize this soon. But when you have, like, full-grown adult children, it's just not. It's, it's not going to happen soon. <laughs> right. Like, it's not like you're like, oh, hey, like, I feel like. With my teenagers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just different. It's yeah. very, very different. Right now, our child can be sleeping right next to us. <laughs> and they have no idea. Poor Jensen. Yeah, but, yeah, you can't... Uh, but you know. it's so important to, like, like we've been saying, like, to keep that alive and that feminine energy and keep the sex drive mm-hmm. alive, like, even yeah, though... Yeah, like, Even though, like, you're <laughs> maybe making again? more money than them, <laughs> like, you're more successful, like, still making them feel like the man and having, you know... Yeah, so yeah. important. We're trying so, to bring this home. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I know. I'm like, what, what, did, what was this episode supposed to be about again? 
Um, I mean, it's all just connected, I think. Like, there's just yeah. so many different avenues. It's like a spider web. It's not just one thing. No, absolutely. But, you know, it trickles when you're... into every aspect of mm-hmm. your life. It is. And, like, I feel like, you know, being feminine and letting that go a little bit, like, when you're home is important because your man knows that you make more money. Mm-hmm. He's uncomfortable mm-hmm. about that. Mm-hmm. No matter what yes. he says, there are men that can handle it better than others, yes. But, um, you know, that's why I try not to be controlling in other ways. And mm-hmm. I'll just be like... Um, you decide. You pick. Not like when, oh, hey, mm-hmm. what do you want to eat tonight? I'll be like, I feel like a burrito or something. But like when it's other things, like how do you want me to do this or tie this knot or just for an example, I don't know, whatever you think. Like that's, yeah. you just let them know that you have trust in them to do it the right way to take yeah. care of you. Yeah. Wait until it's a kid. So. It's hard. Well, can oh, that mommy, oh that gosh. like, um, that, uh, intuition. Yeah. You're yeah. like, no, this is, like, I know, but you yeah. have to, like, step back and, like, just let them that. be a father the way that they want to be. Yeah. And, you it's know, they want to, like, toss the kid up in the air and you're like, oh, my God, uh-huh. you're going to kill my child, like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know with Ken, respect is a huge thing. But I think mm-hmm. it is with me, too. Like, I, to me, like, love and respect are, like, intertwined. Yeah. Like, if I don't feel respected, I don't feel loved, and I know he feels the same way. So mm-hmm. that's a big one. Like, he wants to be respected, and I think that has to do with, like, how you're saying, like, Asking how to do something where I think I know how to do it, yeah. even though I don't. Um, well, so, so to yeah. bring up, because there's the love and respect thing that I think a lot of people have probably heard about. And it's not always necessarily, like, the woman who wants the love. Like, sometimes it's flopped. Like, there's a yeah, masculine and a little bit of a, yeah, yeah. a feminine energy in the relationship. But I heard recently that um, women... In, in like every relationship, they just want to feel secure. Like their yeah. their yeah. core need is yeah. to feel secure. And a man, their core need is to feel honored. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And so it's like, how do you hear that? make sure that like, it, let's say like your guy is not providing for you financially. So like, how, like, how do you feel secure? Like is, does that bring up an insecurity sometimes? You know? And like, how do you make them feel honored? Like, in other ways if they're not the breadwinner, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to honor everything else about them and what they do for a living is no less than what you do just Mm -hmm. because they make less money. Right. Um, So, yeah, I think for me, like, feeling secure, I feel secure in different ways. Like, I feel Mm -hmm. secure because I know that he's good at things that I'm not, and I know that he would do anything for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that makes me feel loved. Yes. And that makes me feel secure. And I know that he would, he would do anything for me. Like, there is nothing that man would not do for me. And I know that your husband's Mm -hmm. the same way, and I know that your husband's the same way. So, it's, having to play up the other things Mm -hmm. that isn't about money. And I play down the fact that I have money as much as I can. Yeah. Like I try to never say when he says, Oh, well, what color do you want? Mm -hmm. Or if we disagree on color, I'd never try and say, well, I'm paying for it. Yeah. Like that's so disrespectful. And I have also made that mistake. Uh Um, I've made that mistake with my ex-husband. I've made the mistake with Nick and like that, you can't take that back. Mm -hmm. And so I think playing up those other things about like how, like when he comes back from, he's a firefighter paramedic. Like when he comes back, like, thank you so much for working so Mm -hmm. hard for us so that Mm -hmm. you can take us on the date that we did or whatever, you know, like on the things that they do do. Like, yeah. Like I, well, Ken, Ken does, con- I mean, my husband does contribute a lot. And yeah. the, my kids are not his kids. So he's completely taken on that father role. Yeah, because that's one great. is in Hawaii and one is non-existent. <clears throat> but... Not the child, the baby yeah, daddies. <laughs> the baby daddy. One's in, one's in another, across the ocean, and one is God knows where. But I know without a shadow of a doubt, mm-hmm. because of my ex-husband, this is very important, is that man would never cheat on me. Like... Yep. Ever, 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 mm-hmm. ever, he would never cheat on me. It's just not morally who he is as a person, let alone right. his, his love for me. It's just not who he is. Mm-hmm. And that needs to be hyped up and, and appreciated more and spoke Absolutely. about. And, yeah. You know, he doesn't lie. Sometimes I wish he would. <laughs> <laughs> ever. But, you know, like, that's when I when he gives me a compliment or something, mm-hmm. I know it's true. Like, I don't have to be like, oh, you're just saying that because I'm your wife. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, like. He said, I'm pretty. I must look really good today. And then he'll never say it to you again if you say the other thing that you just said. Uh, And that's a big mistake I've had. So, yeah, yeah, I think, and that goes, like, with what we were saying before is, like, Mm -hmm. sticking true to who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like we we fall into these roles in society where we're supposed to be like, oh, no, I'm not pretty. Oh, no, my hair doesn't look good. Yeah, no, accept it. It's like, if somebody, one of my friends, actually, I heard her say this once, and somebody said, oh, you look really pretty. And she's like, thanks. And it, like, rocked my world. I was like, 
oh my gosh, like she just said thank you. As <laughs> yep. if like she knew. Period. And it was the <laughs> most, I was in awe of her. I was just like, that is like so cool. I want to be that. Mm-hmm. And from then on, I've like catch myself and been like, if somebody compliments me, I don't have to say, oh, I got it on sale. Or, yeah. you know, oh, I got it cheaper. Oh, no, this doesn't look good. I just, you know, it's like we have to learn to like accept that and embrace it. And I don't That's know part that of your confidence. Good. Yeah. And, you know, and being being vulnerable. You're afraid to be vulnerable. So is. you it's are like, oh, that... there's a hole in this. Or, oh, I got it here. Because you're... You're, you're oh, afraid to be vulnerable, sale. but really being vulnerable yeah. is like, thank you. And owning, yeah, mm-hmm. I worked my ass off for this. Yeah. And I did pay a lot. And I don't have to tell you where I got it or that it was on <laughs> sale or that I got it from Tracy or Poshmark. Or... Yeah, totally. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so did you guys ever have a conversation with them? Because I know it happened one time with Andy and I of like, you need to, we, Andy and I, we, we call the conversation the, you need to get your shit together talk. <laughs> Wait, tell me more. This well, it was when we were dating and he was in EMS and like we said, like yeah. it's ridiculous how much they do not like how much they're underpaid for like literally saving people's lives. I mean, if he worked on a freaking lives ambulance. If you risk your life, you should be 1000% yeah. taken care of. Yeah, you know, and it was an issue and it was like, you know, I, I want a ring on my hand. I want to be married and like So do I, right? <laughs> if you're I watching, just, I know you're not. <laughs> I just want to say one thing because you have you have a husband or who is an EMT. You have a husband who's a firefighter. I think it's absolutely fucking ridiculous that I, I love and appreciate all of our clients, but the fact that hairdressers make more than firefighters it's is insane. insanity. Yeah. And so just got to put that out there. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nurses do as well. I mean, lots of people do. Yeah. I mean, nurses save lives, but, like, we just make people pretty, which is huge. But, like, I mean... For a hairdresser to they be more than to, a firefighter or a police officer or I don't know. Yeah. They need to pay more and I'll say uh, These in people San Diego. Really run towards fires. In San Diego, they're getting forced to work 96-hour shifts with one day off and then go back to work because so many people are leaving San Diego because yeah. Orange County, LA, mm-hmm. etc. pays more money. Yeah. So they are so short. Like, Nick off gets forced and he'll have to work three, four days in a row. Yeah. He has one day off that he sleeps the whole day, by the way, because he's yeah. up for four days. Yeah. Yeah. And then he goes back to work. That is Mad not respect. safe. Like, so much respect. Yeah. Totally off subject. Yeah. Um, yeah. A little rare. But I had, I had <laughs> but to throw that out You there. were saying, so you Sorry. had the conversation about... Oh, yeah, we had the get your shit together yes. talk, you know. And it, was, and... and it was, you know, I wish I would have had friends like you back then because there's Thank probably you. a That's way nice. better way that I could have phrase that to my then boyfriend, you know, because he literally walked out the door and like went for a walk and was so mad at me. And, you know, because of, you know, he, he, I belittled him. I made him feel disrespected and, you know, and he knew that I was, you know, making more money at that time. But like the way I said it, I wish I would have had more feminine energy around that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, the conversation could have gone better, but it did in the end get him to leave the position he was at and, you know, now he's pursuing, or he's already, you know, like over two years now in the financial industry and doing that and like working towards building his own business and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I'm so happy that we had that conversation because I mean, if we wouldn't have, like maybe he'd still, you know, be stuck doing that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, not that it's bad, like it's amazing what they do, but it just, you know, it doesn't work for everybody. And I've had a different kind of conversation where it was more so like, like unsaid like hey I know I make way more money than you and I'm willing to do this but like when you because Nick loves to help people obviously what he does and it's and I love that about him but he will overextend himself Mm -hmm. so he's also in school Mm -hmm. and he's on about he's like not the president is he the president he hasn't started yet but like the charity committee for the firefighters in Oceanside he's like the top of that now about to be and then he does this other thing and then this other thing like that there's like three other things and school Mm -hmm. and so he'll have to do that and he'll be like oh I'll be home later and so what I'll say to I had the conversation like hey like I really need your time like Mm -hmm. I need you like I want to be with you the dogs need you. I've been here with the dogs for four days straight. Please come help me. Like, and I'll, I phrase it in the way that was like, Hey, so like, I really value your time and Mm -hmm. like, you can build things that I can't do. You take the trash down for me. Like, uh, is there a way that we can make more time for us? 
And then I let him think about it Mm -hmm. rather than trying to be like, hey, you're taking too much on. I don't want you to do X, Y, Z. So um, it's it's really about how you present things and Mm -hmm. say things. And, like, you have to think about it. Like, how would I feel if I was in their situation? Right. And you don't want them to just go into the defensive. Right. Exactly. Because then they're just going to go do what you don't want them to do. Men love to be scattered a couple little ideas and then they put them together Mm -hmm. to come up with the actual idea and they Mm -hmm. think it was their idea the whole time but we're really like that was our idea (laughs) we planted the seed yeah exactly so um i gotta go let my dog out i know (laughs) so sorry boy anyways thanks for watching or listening whatever it is that you are doing and we will uh see you and talk to you in the next episode yes yes (laughs) bye guys bye (laughs) 